the heroin epidemic so bad in the Hudson Valley, the feds are swooping in to help. That includes U.S. Attorney Preet Bahar. We are live at Pace University. That's where Bahar is joining a panel to educate and also to deal with some new solutions. Then we will pivot to politics and take a look at the new names in Trump's cabinet and whether or not they are at odds with the message that he ran on. Also, the president-elect's big deal to save jobs at Carrier in Indiana. Sure sounds good in paper, and he is doing a victory lap four, but the question is, does it set a bad precedent? Good evening, everybody, and welcome to RFL. I'm Richard French. Thank you so much for joining us this Thursday night. Now, he's the closest thing to a modern-day Elliot Ness in New York and one of the most feared names when it comes to state politics and possibly beyond. Now, I'm talking about none other than U.S. Attorney Preet Bahara. Bahar, he is the one who won convictions against big names like Shelley Silver and Dean Skelos. We'll see what happens on appeal. But for now, Bahar is also adding another focus, the heroin and opioid abuse epidemic, which is spreading across the country. But Bahar, he's also talking about a new approach when it comes to prosecutions in the war against opioids, focusing in particular on deadly cases and targeting the dealers who put the drugs out on the street. He's also promising greater federal involvement, even in what would traditionally be local cases and local prosecutions. Bahara, he'll talk more about this at a series of public forums, one of which is about to begin at Pace Law School in White Plains. Our own Dominic Carter, he's on the ground there and he's joining us live. Dominic. Well, good evening to you, Richard. A very serious problem in our viewing area of opioid abuse, how to handle this. We are awaiting Mr. Barrara, who is set to arrive here any minute now, but we're joined by a special guest. This is Mr. James Hunt, who is a special agent in charge in our region for the uh, Drug Enforcement Administration. Thank you very much for joining us. You're welcome. Explain to our audience, a lot of folks, you know, we don't, Sometimes we in society don't pay attention to an issue until it hits us directly. But it's my understanding that this is becoming a growing and increasing and increasing problem. How bad is it? It's the biggest heroin epidemic to ever hit this country. Bigger than the, the seven. Biggest? The biggest, uh, hands down. There's more heroin coming into this city, New York City, and all the country than ever before. Uh, we've gone from seizing 85 kilos a year six years ago to 1,000 kilos a year. So you're talking about over 10 times the amount of heroin that was seizing in New York. The Mexican cartels are responsible for it. They are creating and have created a huge market, a user population uh, to sell their poison. It's that simple. So through this forum, this is the second of a series of three forums that are being done. It's to get the people involved, parents to know about what's going on on the street. It's a crisis. What will be your message tonight? I know the U.S. attorney is the lead person here, and there's been so much intrigue as it relates to his uh, future coming coming up, staying on board. But what will be your main message? The community members are starting to arrive tonight. What will be your main message as somebody that's on the ground dealing with this firsthand up front? Well, I want to tell the community what we're doing about it. We're a law enforcement agency, so that's our primary focus, uh, a federal agency. So I want to tell them the who, what, when, and where of what's happening, how it started, how we got here, and what the federal government's doing about it. But we're only a piece of the puzzle. Law enforcement is only a part of it. Education, treatment, you have to have that too. We're, we're here to lock up the bad guys, but for people who are addicted already, they need treatment. For those who haven't started, I'm talking school kids, they need education not to ever get in this position where so many people are in right now. I just want to make sure, Richard French is in studio right now, but I want to make sure I heard you correctly. Did you say that this is, that the levels are the worst ever? The worst ever. How was that possible in the year 2016? I've been doing this 35 years, and I never thought I would see the heroin rate at what it is today. We lost a generation of people who forgot about all these rock stars who died and celebrities who died of heroin overdoses back in the early 70s. It's a, and it's a new generation of kids who, who somewhere lost that message. And, and that's where we're at right now, but we're here. You said generation of kids. So are you telling me that with the younger generation that they find that the heroin is, is cool? Well, it started with prescription pills 
a lot of young people, they experiment with, experiment with prescription painkillers for fun. Some people had legitimate injuries, they took them and they got overprescribed, but most of the people got hooked because they did it for fun. The problem is you can't experiment with opiates. You can experiment with going, as, as young people do in drinking alcohol. It's not gonna kill you, in most instances. You can't experiment with opiates. And so young people, for kicks, developed habits, the prescription pills got hot, harder and more expensive to get. Heroin is, is plentiful, it's, it's uh, cheap, and it's potent. So they went to the streets, and now they're heroin addicts. Okay. Did they start out for this? No, that's not what they got in it for. Well, we thank you very much for joining us tonight, Mr. Jim Hunt, who is the lead agent for the Drug Enforcement Administration in our region. Thank you very much. Richard, some startling, uh, alarming numbers that you just heard live. Frankly, I didn't know that the problem was that bad, and so I can see why community members are starting to arrive here at the Pace Law School to receive this briefing from the feds. We are awaiting the U.S. Attorney Preet Bahara questions as it relates to the opioid problem for him, and also about his future. We'll have all that and more much later tonight. For now, let's go back to you, Richard, in the studio. Good enough, Dominic. Thank you very much. And, uh, you know, it's almost uh, impossible to get people to agree nowadays on anything, even across political lines, especially, I should say. But everybody agrees the heroin uh, epidemic is just that, an epidemic. We've seen it in suburbs, rural communities, inner cities as well here. And I know people are struggling to get a handle on it. Um, and as you just heard uh, from the DEA agent, uh, it's reached levels that we haven't seen before. So it's interesting from a legal perspective how you're going to now have the U.S. attorney in effect Bigfoot, the, the local law enforcement, to be involved in some of the prosecutions as it relates to the dealers. We'll keep an eye on that as well. All right, when we come back, we will pivot to the world of politics. A tale of two Trumps. During the campaign, he blasted Wall Street. He appealed to the common man. Now he's embracing Wall Street and hiring millionaires and billionaires. We'll talk about that and more after this.